71, when the Indian team came back, it took them forever to come from the airport because the wow. airport was full. There would be traffic jams. There were pictures of Wadekar in the balcony of his of his flat in Dadar, and the entire you could not see the ground. Everyone there. India lifts the World Cup after 28 years. The party starts in the dressing room. Hi, hello and welcome back to Kutti Stories with Ash, brought to you by BKT Tires. Today is the start of something very special. We're going to take a trip down the memory lane with none other than Harsha Bogle by my side. Harsha, I've seen you tweet about Kutti Stories in the past. Yes. It's been a dream for me to have you on Kutti Stories. But and this is not fair actually, because I don't turn the ball like you. <laughs> so I do some things. If you start doing that, what will I do? Because even when I bowled off breaks, it did not turn. I had to bowl leg breaks to make the ball turn. In fact, you inspired me to do this because you, you tweeted about it and said it's fantastic. It's very good. I've had a lot of guests on the show before, some in Tamil, some in English. However, there's been a request around the country to do a lot more in English. Yes. And hence, I thought, what better topic and what better person than you? How does it feel to be on Kutti Stories first? I've watched Kutti Stories. But the thing is, when the subtitles are running, you tend not to watch the person, you tend to follow the subtitles. But uh, I've enjoyed watching the Kutti Stories because I'll tell you what happens for someone like me. I need to know the point of view of a contemporary player. And I enjoy the views of a contemporary player, so I also learn watching the Kutti stories. Except I don't get the <laughs> Tamil film references. Telugu and Tamil are not very far away, actually, to be honest. I yeah. watch a lot of Telugu movies, uh. and I, I, can, I can resonate. I can really get, get the hang of what's happening. However, I thought, uh, you know, um, you, you said that you want to understand a contemporary player. Uh, but this is an IPL era. Yes. Uh, and I thought going back, starting, the first episode, of course, it's going to be the 1975 and 79 World Cup. A lot of Indian fans now, I, we spoke about the players, a lot of Indian fans now talk so much in glow about the IPL stars. The IPL has been a massive hit. Uh, it's been one of the biggest commercial products in the, country, yes. in the world for the game. Uh, however, I think knowing about the history of Indian cricket, I mean, going to 1975-79 is going to put us in a bit of balance, right? On how cricket was then, where the world cricketing superstars at that point of time what was Indian cricket team like? What was an Indian fan like? Uh, that's specifically what sure. this is going to be about. Any top of the head memory? Because my dad was an aspiring fast bowler looking to play for India at that point of time. Uh, I wasn't even in his dream at that point of time. Uh, what was your memory of 19… I was a kid, just turned uh, teenager. And nobody knew what to expect from the 75 World Cup. Someone just said, let's have a World Cup. And I remember Ian Chappell telling me many years later that even they didn't take it seriously till they got to play England in the semi-final. Wow. Okay. He said, right mate, now we've got to do something about this because we can't let England win. Okay. So that is when Australia also started taking it seriously. It was a 60 over the side test match. 60 over the side test match? Effectively. Okay. No field restrictions, no bouncer restrictions. There is a thrilling episode of Dennis Lilly bowling to Alvin Kalicharan. And I think he bowls four or five bouncers in an over and Kalicharan plays five hook shots in the over. And there's fielders, fielders back and Kalicharan keeps hooking. And that is the whole story. Does he connect or? No, he connects. He hits three or four fours. Okay. And Kalicharan was a breathtaking batter. So, it was in many ways, we had no idea what this is. There was a team from East Africa that came in. And East Africa was Kenya, Zambia, Tanzania. I think they combined together because there were only six test playing nations in 1975. Sri Lanka was invited as the seventh. And East Africa, because you needed two groups of four each, you needed another team. So, so East Africa got... added up. It became a trivia quiz question because it later said who were the only father and son to play in World Cups. First father and son was Don Pringle who played for East Africa Derek. and Derek Pringle who played for England. So, wow, it, it led to that. I mean, teams were unsure of how to go about it. I mean, it was an era of test cricket. So, obviously, it must have been yeah. new territory like how T20 was when it started. Uh, some of our great cricketers decided not yes. to play T20 cricket. Anyway, I think two cricket nuts talking about it. This will go on. I mean, it's never going to end. So, I thought We'll put it into segments and talk yeah. about some vivid memories so that the fans can, uh, you know, uh, make sense of it. So, uh, there'll be three segments in every episode. First episode is going to be Venkat's men. Yes. Because the 1975 and 79 World Cup was captained by the great Venkat Raghavan, who hails my, from my part of the country. Uh, and we'll have three segments in it. Memories, superstars and culture. Okay. Uh, in 1975, Ms. Indra Gandhi was the Prime Minister of the country. Yes. My father was an aspiring cricketer. The dollar was probably eight rupees. 
Uh, yes. At that point of time, what is your first memory of India traveling yeah. to England to play Go this World Cup? Going abroad was a pipe dream. In those days, I remember, I mean, a few years before that, someone told my father, somebody had come back from England. If you came back from England, there was a party. At home? No, not in our house. My okay. father had gone to somebody's okay. house because that person had come back from England. Okay. And he's telling stories of how life in England is. Because don't forget, we were also very uh, pushed under by years of colonial rule. So we thought everything about them is correct. He called him and said, you know what is special about England? Itte itte bache English bolte. <laughs> little, little children speak English. It's like you going to someone and saying, little children speak Tamil. So that was the awe around, uh, around England. But we had no idea what one day cricket was. India had played a handful, two, three games, I think on the 74 tour. But India was not a very confident country. You look at what happened just before India went to the 75 World Cup. India had gone to England in 74, bowled out for 42. 42? So we wow. call it in, in that Old Trafford test, they call it a summer of 42, which was a movie. It was a slightly steamy movie, but they call it summer of 42. So India had got bowled out. Everything about the tour went wrong. They went late to the High Commissioner's party for some reason. They were stuck in traffic. High Commissioner sent them home. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. And remember India going after having won in 71. Then in 75, so you've, you're carrying that baggage of 74 when you go. Uh, Tiger Pataudi had become captain just before that again in 74-75. Then he retired. So suddenly Venkatragon is the only man standing. The captain, yeah. Because he'd been vice captain for a, for a while under Ajit Vadekar. In, interesting that you said that because uh, the captaincy was a constant uh, bait and handed over at that point of time. Off camera, you were talking about uh, how the captaincy flipped over. A, a lot of things were happening in world cricket at that point of time, you know. You mentioned briefly about Kerry Parker. Venkat led both the teams in 75 and 79. I think uh, Bishan Singh Bedi uh, was the vice yes. captain in 75. And I think Gavaskar was the vice captain in 79, wasn't he? In 75, actually, Bedi was the only one who played in England. He played for Northamptonshire. They were waiting for Farooq engineer who had played for Lancashire. In fact, in that test, in that game, I call it test because India made 130 in 60 overs. I was listening to the radio commentary at home on 25-31 meter band used to get BBC. That was our only access to the World Cup. I'm listening desperately to the commentary. They would come for about 20 minutes to the India game because there were four matches happening around the country. So, the England game would obviously get precedence. Then the Australia game would get precedence. From time to time, they would go to the India game. But that was an India-England game. So, they covered it a little bit more. And I remember the commentator saying all along, once Farooq engineer comes, he'll get a move on. Once engineer comes, he'll get a move on. And India made 132 runs in 60 overs. Interesting enough, there were a lot of episodes from that game that I wanted to take a fan perspective on. Starting from 1975, I've heard stories from my father. Now, I'm hearing from you. Uh, I've seen cricket evolve, you know, from there. But I thought Indian cricket and India as a country has always had some sort of a synchronization, right? Yes. The growth of India and Indian cricket. Yes. Uh, is, that, is that something that comes to comes in my head or? In, in 75, India is still a poor country. There's emergency happening. There's all kinds of things happening around India. India is a country in turmoil, but India is still a poor country. I remember one of the openers who went on the 71 tour, so just three or four years earlier, said we used to carry two bats. Two bats for the entire tour? Two bats. If one broke, you're left with the other one. He said, somebody from Grey Nichols came to give us bats. And we were like, you know, someone's delivering chocolates to us. But he would give the one bat that he wanted to give. If it was not your way, too bad for you. If you wanted your bat and your balance, you bought it. They didn't have enough money to go then go and buy that bat. So, you see, that, that was 71, 70, uh, just four years earlier. So, India was still a poor country. Allowances were very poor. England used to... Uh, Look down on India a great deal, something that happened even I experienced till as recently as 1990. It's changed quite a bit now. It has been forced to change, I'd, I'd, I'd imagine. But especially Lords, which was a terrible, terrible place to go to uh, watch cricket. It was wow. terrible. They were, they were arrogant, they looked down on you, they were condescending, they were racist. It was a terrible place for, to watch cricket. They had to change because winds of change swept. So, just to put 75 in perspective, India is inexperienced because India has played a handful of games. There was hardly any limited overs cricket in India other than the, like you have in Chennai a tournament, you have a Delhi a tournament, that's it. There was no organized uh, cricket, uh, limited overs cricket in India. So you just went and said, okay, we got three games to play. I mean, people will not realize today the entire World Cup is played over five playing days. That's in a span it. of two weeks, like in with a span of days. two weeks, five playing days, that's it. Even the two semi finals were played on the same day. Wow, okay, in different venues. Different venues. Imagine that happening now, it's never yeah. going to happen. So four venues. There are eight teams, they're playing on four venues. Three days later, you mix the teams around another four games, four venues. Uh, you have three playing days, two semi-finals and the final, the World Cup's over in five days. That's pretty much it. Somebody conceived the thought and just happened, I guess. 
And I thought I just wanted to bring that story. You spoke about the econ economics of Indian cricket and the players' daily allowance. There was a really, really funny story that I came across. I'm sure you remember Ejuvendra Singh from the 1979 yes. squad. Yeah, I know him well, yeah. Unbelievably good interview that I read. Interviews have changed. I mean, uh, the players giving interviews in the modern era and how it was then. It's chalk and cheese. Uh, it came straight from the heart of Ejuvendra Singh and it was so funny, yet so informative. Uh, he, he had spoken about how Pakistani superstars were a cut above the Indian stars at that point of time. Imran Khan came to the World Cup and there was an aura about him. Yeah. And he also says that uh, the allowance for uh, a week for the Indian team was 105 pounds. Uh, can you imagine that? Vaseem Raja takes him to the casino, saying you can earn more money for the week. And he ends up losing 100 pounds. And the next day, he goes to Sunil Gavaskar and asks him to cover the rest of the week for him. Uh, which is when he gets a surprise knock on the door to say that the BCCI is hosting a, di a dinner for the team. So he says, all right. That's BCCI, one meal saved. That's one meal saved and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, the BCCI president at that time, NKP Salve, comes over. They host a dinner. He, he enjoys his meal to only realize that 18 pounds gets knocked off of the next week's, <laughs> next week's, allowance. Next week's allowance. And I, I found that story unbelievable from there to see how Indian cricket And I'm come. delighted that you want to bring it up because I think you must be aware of what your predecessors did. I mean, someone like Budhi Kundran, I used to be a big fan of Budhi Kundran. He slept near the stadium somewhere so that he would not be late to go to the test match the next day that he was playing in. And he didn't have keeping gloves. So he went to Narin Tamane, whom he had replaced the previous evening and said, can I borrow your gloves? Wow. So Indian cricket has come out of that kind of, uh, that kind of era. 75 was a lot better. But remember Pakistan in 75, 79, you had Mushtaq Muhammad, Asif Iqbal, Imran Khan, Sarfraz Nawaz, all playing county cricket in county in cricket. Alam, All playing county cricket. So they would have been earning money in England. Interestingly enough, in the same article, he goes on to say, Pakistan landed in England with prim proper sweaters ready for the cold weather, whereas India didn't have a good sweater yes. to go with. And somebody saw the Indian struggle in Scarborough and Yorkshire. Imagine the north of England and then decided to make sweaters for the Indian team. From now, where we carry at least three, four layers going to the tour. A lot of the pride came with the arrival of Gavaskar. Look, Tiger Pataudi was the first one who brought about, then Gavaskar brought that pride back in. But back in 75 again, Gavaskar is still only three years old, remember? Three or four years old. So, he's been on a couple of tours of England before, but he's still only three, four years old. So, I think everyone was feeling their way around. It didn't end very well, but India won a game against East Africa. That was in two World Cups put together. <laughs> yes. Look, Venkat's era had one World Cup win in it, starting from 1975 to 79. Uh, before we dive further into the next episode, I think we can keep going on about the memories. I'm going to cut it short there and take you to the next segment, yeah. which is Superstars. Yeah. Uh, Harsha, on Superstars, we spoke a lot about Indian Superstars, which was largely revolving around Sunil Gavaskar. Probably the biggest superstar to come out of the 75. And later on, of course, Kapil Dev yes. came into the team in 79. We'll talk about that. Uh, what about the world superstars? Can we look beyond the West Indian superstars? West Indies in Australia. And it was, Australia? It, was, it okay. was symbolic that they played the final. West Indies was… It was one of the greatest one-day games ever. And I think we owe that game a huge debt. In 1975. In okay. It was such a great final that it got people hooked on to the 60 overs cricket. Clive Lloyd made 102 in 85 balls in partnership with one of our childhood heroes, Rohan Kanhai. Gavaskar used to tell, told many stories about Kanhai afterwards. Gordon Greenwich had just appeared, Roy Fredericks, and my personal favourite is Alvin Kalicharan. And they played, I mean, they just played with that great flair. Young Viv Richards had just come in, noticeable that he hit three direct hit runouts in that 75 final. final yeah. And then Lillian Thompson batting towards the end. Was he man of the match in the final for the runouts? Or was uh, it Clive? Would, would have been Clive Lloyd, I'd imagine. But yeah, yeah okay. but he was remembered for, for those runouts. Lloyd hit 100 of 85 balls. But as the last wicket partnership was growing, people were running onto the ground all the time. At one time, the ball got lost. And these guys said, let's keep running till they find <laughs> the ball. Someone said, one guy might creep up with the ball and run us out. And this is happening in the middle of a World Cup final. Can't and, imagine that. Yeah, now. but you had Lillian Thompson playing that World Cup final. You had the Chapel brothers playing. And someone who was a hero for a little while, Gary Gilmore, who took six wickets in the semi-final yes. and five in the final. But that was a constellation of players playing that final. And I think that suddenly told us, hang on, this is something big, this is something important. When you touched upon superstars, I could only think of, you know, Joel Garner, Vivian Richards, Clive Lloyd. I mean, that's, it was, it was the era yeah. of the West Indian uh, players, was. right? They, By the time 79 came, you had, you had Roberts holding Garner oh Croft. In 75, you still had Keith Boyce, Bernard Julian, all these guys not 
express pace, but they're all all rounders. So they could bat. They batted all the way down. Collis King. Uh, Collis King came in 79. Okay. Clive Lloyd bowled 12 overs. It was 60 over side. Clive Lloyd bowled 12 overs. You see, you see him in glasses, little nerdy looking, running and bowling <laughs> 12 <laughs> overs. 12 overs because they played. They they were very clear. They will play six batsmen, one uh, wicket keeper. Four bowlers, four threatening fast bowlers, and they only got to the final because Derek Murray and Andy Roberts added 70 runs for the last wicket to beat wow. Pakistan. That's interesting. They may not have made the semi semi final otherwise, or they may not have made the final, but they added 67, 70 runs to uh, with the last pair. It's interesting that you say that because when I when my dad speaks or my grandfather speaks or anybody from that era speaks, because there is not enough television coverage, they literally spoke about West Indies as invincible teams. Of course, they had the results to go with it. But if you hadn't told me that the game was won with the last wicket partnership, I would have thought like West Indies was just team rolling. How like how Australia did much later. That last wicket partnership had too much to cover. The victory margin was qu was quite decent anyway. Okay. But Viv Richards as a fielder was interesting. Sometimes when you are very good at one skill, you might be brilliant at another, but it gets overshadowed. So we don't talk enough of what a great fielder Viv Richards was. Awesome. What a phenomenal fielder Clive Lloyd was. That 79 final, England versus West Indies, was phenomenal because West Indies, the height of their powers, the quartet has come together. That's Roberts, Holding, Garner, Garner. Croft. Boycott once said Roberts was wily, Holding was rapid, Garner you just couldn't play him from that height. He said the meanest of them all was Colin Croft. So all four are together. Boycott once asked both of them, "Where do you score runs of Joel Garner?" And both of them said, "You don't." So you don't. You don't score runs of him. So now in the final, I think there are about 80 for four. What was it? 15 overs per bowler at that point of time. 10. Or 12. No, no. We, uh, 60 yeah, over World Cups. Yeah, 79. You come to 12 yeah, over. 12. 12. So 60 so who's over. Who's the 12 bowler? Larry Gomes. No. Was he still around? Viv Richards bowled 10 overs by 79. And Clive Lloyd bowled a bit. Clive Lloyd might have bowled, but Collis King was also your. Uh, ah, Collis okay. King was a little seam up bowler. So we had the four fast bowlers, and then bit of Collis King, bit of Viv Richards. I think Lloyd had stopped bowling by the, by by 79. So they've come to the final, and. Viv, Viv Richards plays one of the great innings. If you look at Viv Richards in finals at Lords, whether it's playing for Somerset or whether it's playing for West Indies, he always had a big score in a final at Lords. And very contemporary shot to finish. He hits a six of Mike Hendrick. He walks across and takes a ball from fourth fifth stump and hits it over square leg. And they get 270 280, which was a big score in a 60 over game in those days. And they let England bat on. I mean that bowling lineup, Boycott and Brearley, batted. If I remember right, till about the 37, 38th over to put on 120 or so. What do you mean they let them bat on? They just batted on and on and on, and these guys were okay. You're saying intentionally they allowed them. Viv Richards told me a story on an interview that I did. He said he didn't get a lot of wickets. He finishes 150 wickets, by the way, and he said he got a miss hit, and there's Clive Lloyd under it at wide mid on. Who's this? Who's the batter? Uh, either Boycott or Brearley. I don't remember. Okay. And he said Lloyd doesn't drop catches, right? And he just went back, and it just fell off his hand. You know, you've seen the backpedaling little bit at middle on to take a skier. He drops it, and Viv said, "I gestured wildly towards Clive Lloyd," and he just did that. He said, "That's when I thought, did he drop it on purpose? Because by the time they took a wicket, they, uh, the partnership was broken. The asking rate was eight, eight and a half. In those days, was inconceivable. And then Joel Garner bowled five yorkers, and that was the end of the game. You see the scoreboard: Gooch bowled, Gower bowled, everybody just bowled Garner." Garner wow. just came in from that height. Joel Garner was six foot seven, six foot eight, long hands. They called him Big Bird, and he just bowled yorkers, and it was over. Wayne Larkins, the innings just got over. So they were 120 odd for no loss and 170 all out. You talk about game awareness, dropping a catch just so that they can. They Certainly, can... Viv, Viv told me specifically that Clive Lloyd dropped that catch. He just smiled and and did that. That's, that's game awareness. Harsh. Yeah. That was 1979, and Clive Lloyd yeah. was an epitome of game awareness. And that's why I've always felt Indian cricket and India. Have grown together over the years, just like our sponsor BKT Tires, yes. whose motto is also growing together. I think we'll get to that uh, culture bit when we yeah. talk about India in that World Cup. Uh, however, I thought we should touch upon a team called Sri Lanka, right? I do not know much about them, but in those two World Cups put together, Sri Lanka was an associate nation in the second World Cup, and I think India lost to Sri Lanka. Uh, the only win came against East Even Africa. Even at 75, West Indies played Sri Lanka in a game. Uh, Australia, sorry, Australia played Sri Lanka. And Australia made 300 odd, and the Sri Lankans came out firing. Eventually, Tomo and Lily had to bowl bouncers. Three three Sri Lankan batsmen got hit on the head. Pre-helmet oh. era. Okay. Ranjit Fernando used to tell me this story. Yes. Uh, Vettimuni, Dias, Mendes, Tenakoon—they were phenomenal players, and they took on Australia in 
Tell me so about tell lot me a of bit stories about in Chennai. Dice. You'll know about the Gopalan Trophy. Yes. All yes. those great players, Michael Tissera, all these players used to come over here to play. But Sri Lanka in in seventy five, Ceylon was a was a fabulous team. They played the Gopalan Trophy with Tamil yeah. Nadu here. It was like a home and away game yeah. for Tamil Nadu. Uh, can you just talk a bit about Roy Dice? Like in the superstar section, of course he was spoken about very highly. But anything that you remember about Roy Dice from those days? You ask anybody who played cricket against Sri Lanka in the seventies, eighties. And there are a lot of names. Tenakoon was a stylish player. Dulip Mendes was this big guy. He would cut and pull. But everyone says Roy Dias was like a stylist. He was their Vishwanath. Wow. Okay. They would talk about Roy Dias in those glowing terms, and he was very classical. I didn't see much of Roy Dias because no television. Ceylon came to India in 1975. I had school. I could not go and watch them, but I knew that that side. But everyone talks about Roy Dias in glowing terms, and he got runs against all the touring teams. So if you see 79 when India lost to Sri Lanka, Roy Dias is in that side. Okay. The Siddhartha, the Sunil, Wait. Sunil Vettimuni, Bandula Varnapura, Roy Dias, Dulip Mendes, all those guys played in that game. Interesting. Uh, and that's exactly why I love going back uh, to the past, right? Like today when people compare the present player with the past player, I absolutely hate it. The reason being, a present player must always understand that you're walking on the road that these people once upon laid. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, without them, there is no us today. So. Uh, it's a wonderful journey to talk about. It's, it gives me absolute pleasure to do that. Which is why the next segment is very, very important, Harsha. The culture. When you speak about culture, you, you might just wonder why you speak about culture in a, in a cricket discussion. Uh, like I said, the cricketing culture changes. The landscape of the country changes, which is our country in this position. And of course, the mindset of a fan changes. What was a fan like in 1975? A fan of an Indian cricket team. Yeah. Uh, was, it, was it very dreamy? Was it very hopeful? Or was it just, you know, stock standard, India would go, India would participate and our expectations are… Well, weren't great. In, in, in India, we had started winning. In 71, when India won in West Indies and England, it was unheard of. So, it was like a revolution. Would India they be, would they be like, won there. Would there be like crack a burst? So, and in all 71, that? when the Indian team came back, it took them forever to come from the airport. Because the wow. airport was full, there would be traffic jams. There were pictures of Wadekar in the balcony of his of his flat in the other, and the entire you could not see the ground. Everyone there in Indore, they erected a giant bat in honor of the of the Indian team, which sadly they defaced in 1974 after India lost there. But it was huge. We used to queue up for tickets for a long time to watch a Moinuddaula game. And there was a test match in India uh, in in Hyderabad. Our school had a little enclosure. We used to get tickets in bulk, and so we had to go in school uniform to go and watch the uh, the matches there. So, it was huge. Uh, crowds were packed crowds because there was only radio and otherwise you had to read the next day's newspaper. So, you loved going and watching. And you know, you watch the game. Go and watch a game from mid-wicket. How much do you follow of a game from mid-wicket? You can't pick the ball. But the stories at night of someone who has watched the game from mid-wicket, you have to see to believe. <laughs> My father would tell me stories of a commentator called AFS Taliyar Khan who said, I will only do commentary by myself. Five days all by himself, he would do commentary. And the country would come to a standstill when the quadrangulars and pentangulars were being played. Can you imagine today Hindus playing against Muslims, playing against Europeans, Christians, Parsis, until Mahatma Gandhi stopped uh, that. So, cricket was, you went to the stadium and watched, you carried your sandwiches with you, you carried your food, transistor. water, transistor with you, because transistor was your only way of knowing who the player, player is. was. Then, by 70s, you started getting the scorecards with the numbers on it. So, batsman number 8 is batting with batsman number 6. On the scoreboard, batsman number 8 and 6 would come. So, to keep watching you the have big to scoreboard. Match both of them. Uh, you have to match the scoreboard <laughs> to see who is batting. Absolutely yeah. lovely days. My father used to say he used to carry a towel in the morning, walk all the way from Tinagar to Chepok, which is in Chennai, and then used to lay on the galleries at 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning to watch a test match. You had to literally reserve your seats using a piece of towel or a cloth I or remember changing two buses. Changing two buses to go because from our house, we didn't have a bus going to Lal Bahadur Stadium. And this is in the 70s. And everybody in the bus is talking about what is likely to happen in the match. We spoke about the fans. Uh, can we talk about the cricket team itself? What was the culture of the Indian team per se at that point of time? If I had to ask yeah. you to concise that for me in like three, four sentences, what would it be? Through the late 60s, when the quartet of spinners started coming together, uh, Bedi 66, Prasanna 62, I think Venkat 65, Chandra around that time as well. And when all of them were playing, India never had a fast bowler. In 71, when India went to England, you had Abid Ali, my city. Gavaskar. Uh, Gavaskar bowled nine overs with a new ball once. <laughs> yeah, I remember. But Abid Ali for us was fast. Okay. 
then I made the mistake of watching an old video. He was about 120. But Eknath Solkar was a new ball bowler. And even before Abid Ali came, they would roll the ball from the first over. So that, so the spinners that could. by the third, fourth over, the spinners had come on, the ball would be rolled from the first ball. So mid-off would roll the ball back to the bowler. Mid-wicket would roll the ball to mid-off, who would then roll the ball back to the bowler. So that the spinners could come on. And yeah. just those three bowlers. So you went to England to play, for example. It's cold, the spinners can't grip the ball. But you have nobody. Abid Ali took four wickets in one test match. He became a hero for life for us. So basically, what I gather is from 75, 79, when India played those World Cups, spin it to win it. Spin was your way to success Still for India. And the culture was basically participation and no real expectation from the team. Could we say that or? Fair enough, fair enough. India still had, had won 71, remember? But… No, it, yeah. this is largely with respect to the World Cups. Largely. largely. But you still won at home. You still won matches at home. The reason but I say that was chasing 330 against England. India decided to shut shop and we played 60 overs to a, you know, sort of a defeat. We just meandered along. Imagine a fan reaction to something like that now. SMG laughs it off now. I'm sure he wasn't laughing it off at, at that point. But it, it just told you that you were so brought up on Test cricket that this was just… I mean, till, as, till Packer came along, late 70s, they called it pajama cricket. Why Saying is that? This is Test cricket because you played in coloured clothes in Kerry Packer. Where did you wear coloured uh, trousers when you went to bed wearing pajamas? So, it was <laughs> called pajama cricket uh, when uh, Kerry Packer started it. So, in 75, I mean, that was an era where you were told if you hit the ball in the air, that's another way of getting out. Yes. You only hit the ball along the ground in the gap. Gavaskar had to run rounds as a punishment with his pads on if you hit the ball in the air. All your cricket was governed by what came from there. I think a lot changed from 77 when uh, Kapil Dev arrived. And then you had Kapil Dev and Karsan Ghavri. And at last, you had a new ball attack. In fact, Kapil Dev goes on to say that Venkat was the captain then. And looking at Venkat, I used to fear it. Because he always spoke in English and I thought he was yelling at me every single time he said something in English. So, he used to sit right next to the restroom and just jog away into the restroom every time Venkat spoke. Yeah. So, in, in short, what I understand is Indian cricket was about spin. Was about, you know, senior, junior sort of a culture that existed inside the dressing room. I mean, when Kapil Dev first came to the national camp, he had started getting noticed. And he asked for additional milk and whatever at the side. They said, what, you want to bowl fast? <laughs> For what joy? Yes, <laughs> what, what are you bowling fast for? So, you, they were, um, uh, when Madan Lal came in, for example, I remember India went to the West Indies in 76. Madan Lal was your lead new ball bowler. In fact, he bowled the first over of World Cups of the for 75 India. 75 World Cup. So, we didn't have pace till Kapil Dev came. A young Kapil Dev was very sharp. He realized as he went along that he had to bowl 20, 25 overs and swing the ball, but he was very sharp. Boycott tells me in 79, Kapil Dev was very sharp. He bowled a very fast outswinger. So, by 79, actually, India had its worst World Cup in 79. But at least Kapil Dev and the other had started to come and were laying the seeds for what happened in 83. You spoke about pyjama cricket. You spoke about pace coming into Indian cricket. You spoke about the, uh, the emergence of Kapil Dev. There is a lot more that we need to speak, Harsha, because two World Cups, one victory, 1975 and 79, the Venkat era was defined by that. The but second nine... Venkat era is more interesting. Why did Venkat become captain again in 79? You see, what happens after 75 is uh, Bishan Bedi becomes captain. After India come back from Pakistan in 78, Gavaskar becomes captain. Gavaskar's captain all the way through to early 79. And suddenly, when India go to the uh, World Cup, Gavaskar is not the captain. Syed Kirmani, world-class wicketkeeper, is not in the side. Because at that time, Packer was sourcing from India as well. And the story that was doing the rounds was Gavaskar had been asked, Kirmani had been asked, maybe Chandra and Vishi had been asked but not a lot of the others and India didn't take too kindly. So, suddenly Gavaskar is not captain. Who do you go back to? Venkat Raghavan comes back as captain. 79. 83, India go to the West Indies. Kapil Dev is captain. Venkat Raghavan is in the side. It was a different story. Yeah, it's a different story, of course. But um, uh, Kerry Parker, you yeah. touched upon Kerry Parker. Seemed like rebel cricket at that point of time. I don't think the world cricket took, took it no. too kindly. A lot of cricketers did eventually go on to play for uh, Kerry Parker. And uh, as a result in 79, you had a very substandard Australian team playing the 79 World Cup. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is, rebellious is not so bad. Because Kerry Parker's rebellion changed yeah. the way world cricket was. Yes. We need to speak about 1983, from winning one game in two World Cups, to probably changing the landscape of world cricket today. Uh, but that's not for today's episode. That will be the next one, where we cover 1983 and 87. India's two, literally two World Cup primes back to back after one victory. Yes. Uh, that will be on the other side, Harsha. Uh, thank you so much for doing Pleasure. this.
and thank you so much for joining us on Kuti Stories with Ash, brought to you by BKT Tires. India lifts the World Cup after 28 years. The party starts in the dressing room.